Uh, well, good afternoonish, everyone. Um, I'll be giving a talk about performance tools, uh, in particular the ones that we are going to look at. So, again, just to uh, briefly remind everyone, and as everyone might have uh, already been uh, hearing for all the talks, uh, Cori is going to be uh, decommissioned shortly, and so we want all our uh, users, uh, new and old to start working on Perlmutter uh, as soon as possible, start uh, migrating uh, to Perlmutter. Uh, and so today we are gonna look at the performance tools that, that are available uh, on Perlmutter. Uh, note that there are two major omissions in this list, uh, namely Intel Advisor and Intel VTune. And we no longer uh, have those because the architecture on Perlmutter is different compared to Cori. And so, an entire list of all the performance tools uh, that are available uh, can be accessed at this particular links uh, in nurse docs. Um, primarily, uh, we have seen users uh, get interested in using uh, perf tools, which is uh, provided by Cray, uh, NVIDIA's Insight Systems and Insight Compute, uh, um, ARM Map and ARM Performance Reports. Previously, it's also known as DDT. Uh, for uh, data purposes, in order to measure data performance, uh, we have used uh, Darshan IO Profiler. And Timery is, uh, uh, is a very high-grained, high-fidelity profiling toolkit. It's not a profiling uh, tool. Uh, it's a profiling toolkit, which can then be leveraged to uh, measure whatever performance that uh, users are interested in. Uh, but for us, today we are going to look at uh, a, a brief primer on how to use Craypad, Perf Tools, uh, Perf Tools Lite, uh, and Insight Systems and Insight Compute. Uh, note that Perf, uh, Cray uh, Perf Tools can be used with the wrappers. So the compilers that are supported, uh, you can use uh, MPI for MPI codes. You have, um, you have the Cray compilers, and also it supports Fortran using the FTN compiler. Insight systems are exclusively used for GPU profiling, and it supports uh, these compilers as well as it supports Python. So to start off uh, our talk, I'll, we'll take a look at Craypad, uh, uh, Craypad profile, uh, profiling tools. Uh, in particular, we'll be looking at perf tools. Uh, so do note that Craypad is specifically for use on Cray machines. Uh, and mostly the results that are generated are text-based. However, there is Apprentice 2, which can be used uh, as a GUI to um, look at the results. Uh, the modules that are uh, prerequisite or required to uh, use Perf Tools is Perf Tools Base, which is required uh, before loading Perf Tools or Perf Tools Lite. And on Perlmutter, it is uh, loaded by default. Uh, Perf Tools is the full suite. Uh, and Perf Tools Lite, as the name suggests, is easy to use and is used for quick analysis. And many times it might be adequate. So let's take a brief look at how do we use Perf Tools Lite. And so for, for, for the case of uh, this presentation, we are using a Jacobi solver written in Fortran with MPI and OpenMP support. Uh, one of the requirements uh, of using Perf Tools is that the code must be run in Scratch. Um, or you should set an environment to run it from elsewhere. Uh, second, whatever object files that are generated uh, while, while compiling the code um, should be created in a separate step and must remain present uh, because that's how the analysis will uh, give, you, uh, give you plots and charts. Uh, to visualize the result, as, as I mentioned, you can use app two, which is apparentist two. And in order to view those, uh, we recommend that you can you use the NX uh, no machine, uh, or if you are in a pinch and in a hurry, you can launch uh, the terminal with X forwarding. Uh, to run, um, it, to profile your code with uh, Perf Tools, Perf, sorry, Perf Tools Lite, uh, these are the steps. So the first step is to unload Darshan and Exalt um, as they conflict with, uh, with the uh, metric collection. Uh, you then load uh, Perf Tools Lite. Following uh, that, we use the programming environment tray, which contains all the compilers um, that, that we are looking at. Uh, and 
In particular, we compile the Jacobi solver in two steps. So the first step, we generate the object files. And the second step, we use those object files to generate the executable. Then we uh, request a four node uh, interactive job and uh, profile the code. So the profiling step, you don't really have to modify your code. You don't really have to specify anything uh, other than just run the code. So when you compile this code, two executables will be generated, one with the name that is given, and it already contains the profiling information uh, require, uh, required uh, to uh, for Perf tools to uh, work with. And the other one, uh, other executable, which will be um, which will be called Jacobi MPI OMP plus Orig, which which stands for the original uh, compiler, and it doesn't really um, generate any Perf tools light information when you run that. Uh, and so the text-based result that is generated from Perf tools light uh, will look like this. So the first uh, chart or uh, information that that will provide it will give you the number of uh, ranks and the number of resources um, that you have used, uh, and also give you the information of the uh, of the architecture on which you are running. Uh, another important thing that we notice is that uh, we can get the I/O information uh, straight from a visible chart without any uh, additional modification to the code. Um, the first table now shows you uh, the sample times, and sample times are measured in hundredth of a second. So the units of this sample time is hundredth of a second, and the chart shows you the most time-consuming uh, kernels or loops that we have. So in, in this particular example, uh, we have this Jacobi MPIOMP loop uh, on line 61, uh, which takes around 53.3% uh, of sample time. Uh, and additionally, the next most computationally expensive part is a compute diff uh, loop, which starts on line 261. And so information has to be read in, in, in this uh, manner. What you notice is also that it gives you MPI information, which is pretty handy. Uh, if your uh, code needs optimization in terms of uh, MPI, you can, you can use both tools uh, very easily with very little modifications to the code, with no modifications to the code, uh, and get the information uh, required for you to optimize the code. Um, this table shows you the uh, line numbers with function. And so it, it's pretty much the same as what you had in, um, in table one, uh, with the exception of it will also tell you what file uh, the function or the loop belongs to. And so over here within um, Jacobi MPI loop line 61, uh, the loop is broken down and you can see what are the two uh, time consuming aspects of this particular loop. And so uh, over here, we see that uh, line 63 and line 66 are the, uh, are the uh, computationally um, dominant uh, um, lines in this, in this particular function. Uh, similar, uh, similarly, we see for compute diff uh, and uh, MPI uh, function. So here, this, this is... This is another way of seeing how much time is required. So many times, uh, what might turn out is that the com some of the computationally most dominant kernels may not be the ones require uh, requiring the maximum amount of time. Most of the time, it is true. However, if it is um, if it is run differently or if there are bottlenecks somewhere else, uh, you table number one and table number three uh, tend to look different. Table number four shows uh, power consumption. Um, this is useful for some of the applications where you need to uh, gauge on how much uh, power requirement was uh, power requirement is necessary to run the code or was utilized uh, to get uh, get the runs. Um, and finally, uh, it generates two more tables: table five and table six. We have not shown table five. Uh, table five reports the average time taken and the number of bytes. Uh, read from a file. And table six is similarly average time and number of bytes, bytes written to a file. And since this code, we didn't really read anything from a file. Uh, it doesn't generate table five. Um, it, it generates table six information and we have everything written out to uh, stand it out. And uh, it, it shows the write speed and the average bytes uh, that were written. PerfTools light, uh, PerfTools also supports uh, similar and analysis for GPU workloads, and it's called PerfTools Lite-GPU. Uh, it also supports loop um, analysis specifically, and it's called PerfTools Lite-Loop. 
Um, the table looks very similar. So here I'm showing you an example of, um, of, of a, a CUDA aware MPI code, um, which, which was profiled using perf tools light dash GPU. Rest of the information looks very similar. Uh, although in this particular aspect, you get uh, information directly from CUDA memcop uh, regarding CUDA, uh, CUDA kernel launch and memcopy. Uh, do note, however, that this is just a brief primer and we are not uh, delving deep into the uh, details of each of these uh, performance uh, tools that we have available. A more in-depth analysis of your code uh, can be performed using uh, perf tools. So steps are very similar to what you use for perf tools light. Again, code must be run in Scratch. Um, and you, you follow the same steps that you have followed for perf tools light. Uh, however, there's a, a bit of a difference. So you need to, after requesting a, an interactive node, you need to build um, this uh, build your uh, executable, which which was generated previously, and use pad build on it um, to get the detail information out. And it will generate a, a new executable called Jacobi uh, MPI plus pad. And when you run this, uh, do uh, just a second. Sorry, sorry to uh, take you back, but we also have. Uh, this particular flag. So if you're using uh, perf tools to an analyze a GPU code, you have to, uh, GPU MPI code, you have to add this flag dash G MPI and name of the executable. So, so this is very similar to what, uh, what function, uh, what uh, syntax we're using uh, to get perf tools built uh, for an MPI, uh, for, a, for a CPU code, uh, you just have to add dash G flag uh, to get it to run for a GPU code. Uh, upon running um, this particular executable with the plus pack um, name, uh, you will get, uh, a, ex, it, once you run it, it will generate an XF file in the data dir uh, folder. Uh, in the data dir folder, you have to now convert these uh, .xf files into the app2 format because we are using apprentice2 to read these files. And the command is as follows. So you, you do uh, pat report um, with a dash f flag for formatting it to uh, app2. And once that's done, you can launch app2 result and it will generate a window like this. And uh, the, each tile within this window uh, gives you specific information. So the code profile here is the Jacobi solver that we looked at for uh, perf tools light. And you can see it, it gives you a breakdown uh, of the, of the runtime uh, of each function as a pie chart. Now, it also gives you the flow chart uh, of the code uh, or the flow of the code, which is really uh, nice if you want to use it for uh, uh, either documentation or you need to move it for refactoring. Uh, it, it also shows you what part of your code on what rank was um, running which directives. So for example, over here, um, the yellow part is the OpenMP part. And so we can see as, as, as a breakdown of 100%, what percentage of time on what rank was used uh, for what purpose. And so it gives you a really detailed information uh, which can be used uh, to improve your code. It also gives you tiling communication information, mosaicing. Uh, so this is a mosaic uh, of time taken uh, from uh, source to what destination and how you can improve. Um, how we can improve the MPI communication time by uh, analyzing uh, your code using a mosaic. Uh, shifting gears, uh, we are looking at Insight Systems, uh, which is a profiling um, tool provided by NVIDIA for uh, GPU workloads. Uh, so Insight Systems is again a low overhead profiler, analogous to Perf Tools Lite. And Insight Compute is like a full fledged Perf Tools uh, feature. And so it provides a broad description of GPU-based application. Uh, the only module required is uh, CUDA or CUDA toolkit. And it supports a variety of applications uh, which are uh, written in either CUDA, COCOS, OpenMP, OpenACC, Python, uh, but they must be done on, uh, on a GPU and application must be compiled using uh, GPU libraries. And so uh, here we are showing, we will be discussing a workload of an OpenMP offload based application, uh, which was compiled using Clang++ compiler or LLVM compiler. And again, the code was run in scratch. 
uh, to visualize the result, uh, again, you have to use uh, NX no machine or you can have X window forwarding. Uh, we do not recommend the X window forwarding because it's, it, it tends to make it extremely slow. Instead, what you can do is download the, uh, the files that are generated uh, as a part of the profile. And you can install uh, both inside systems and inside compute, which are available for free on your local uh, machine, and then um, analyze your code uh, using that. And so the run steps are very similar. Uh, again, you compile your code, you request an interactive, uh, and then in order to profile the code, all you have to do is just add nsys profile stats true. So this gives you information uh, similar to what you uh, just saw for uh, perf tools like. And so it generates CUDA API statistics uh, in order to understand how the uh, code can be improved and where the bottlenecks are. Uh, in particular, it gives you what were the most dominant kernels in your uh, workflow. Uh, do note, however, that if you're using OpenMP offload or Cocos or any other, um, any other uh, GPU-based API, kernel names may be mangled. So the entire name for this function, which I've shown in this uh, table, might be OMP offloading um, with a bunch of letters, and then it will show you uh, the name of the function and what line it was, uh, it's located on. So in this particular example, 61% of our time is taken by compute YI kernel, uh, which is on line 471. And so, um, this is very beneficial in uh, improving the runtimes of the code. Uh, although you can also improve your code quite a bit by making sure your CUDA mem copies from host to device and device to host are kept at a minimum. So here we see the total time uh, taken by uh, just in uh, CUDA mem copying from host to device. And the overall objective is to lower both the time as well as uh, by consequence, you, you can do that by lowering the data transfers between host and device. Uh, it, it once you 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 have you can use NSYS UI, which is a uh, which is a GUI uh, window to analyze the trace of your code, and this is this is a very useful feature. Once you load uh, the uh, load the profiling report that's generated, which is the QD rep, uh, you can then zoom into particular uh, parts of the runtime trace by selecting a brief time uh, uh, window. Here we can see that in this particular instance, when um, the CUDA API is running host to device, uh, we get this on our timeline. Uh, there are some aspects of the code which, which you can improve just by looking at the uh, trace. So here we see that there are gaps between uh, one function being called. So this is OMP offload a function followed by another function, but there is a gap. Uh, and our objective, uh, just by looking at um, a trace would be to figure out why are there gaps at, at this point, what is a CPU doing? So here you also get a CPU trace. And so you can compare GPU versus CPU trace and figure out how you can uh, improve um, your runtime just by eliminating these uh, gaps where or idle times uh, on both host and device. Uh, it also provides you more information regarding what were the resources. So if you select the events view uh, at the bottom of the window and select the function, it will show you what were, what were the launch statistics. So uh, what were the theor theoretical occupancy for this particular function and what thread was launched and um, loads of other information. Um, inside compute, as I pointed out, is sort of a more detailed analysis and um, in this demonstration, we'll do a pretty interesting uh, comparison. So we have a code which we have improved just by adding a collapse loop. And so we want to understand how much improvement just by providing this collapse, collapse clause uh, to the OMP uh, pragma, parallel for pragma, uh, we can improve our code. And so this is a nested loop uh, and these two uh, for loops are now being uh, collapsed. And so we will run our profiling step for inside compute twice. In the first time we'll just run the baseline code and then the second time separately, um, we'll run this optimized code and gather the re reports for both of them. And so in order to get the reports, we can do ncu-o and this, this is the name of the file it will generate. So you can call the profile snap 
case one, case two. Um, and you, you have to use SecFull in order to get the information regarding memory transfer as well. And so one thing to note, the key thing over here to note is that you have to switch the DC GMI profile to pause because a profiling step is already being uh, run on Perlmutter by default. And so you need to switch this to pause. Otherwise, it will give you error. So you, uh, users interested in using inside compute do remember this DC GMI profile uh, dash dash pause. This is separate from uh, query. And so when you load these two files, you can set one of them uh, as baseline. And so what we have set as baseline is the case one. And what we see the case one being the blue, uh, it, it, by just by improving, uh, just by adding a single collapse clause to our uh, function, uh, sorry, kernel, we see that our compute throughput as well as memory throughput have tremendously increased. Um, and our runtime, so comparison also, you can see the duration of this particular function has improved by 97%. It's 97% lower. Uh, compute throughput and uh, memory throughput have uh, improved as well. And the reasons are also provided. So here the L1 cache uh, throughput has in, improved by 10% and the L2 cache throughput has improved by 142%. Um, and similarly, the DRAM improvement. So you, in a single snapshot using uh, uh, speed of light analysis, you can understand the improvements in your code and make similar uh, changes to your code in order to uh, improve an overall runtime. Um, it also provides you roofline analysis. So you can understand that once um, I, making a change, your arithmetic intensity, which is the number of flops executed for a byte of data transferred, increased uh, because we now no longer have to move a lot of data to do the same calculation and our performance, which is flops per second, also improved. And so you, in a single uh, chart, you can get this information um, it also provides you other in, other useful information uh, regarding uh, work, compute workload analysis, what what sort of um, memory uh, transfers were taking place. So here it, it's 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 sort of a repeat of the information that we saw in the speed of light, but it gives you a, a more detailed analysis uh, in terms of whether fuse multiplication and adds were uh, increased or FP sixty four instructions were uh, increased by making a change. Uh, perhaps a more uh, visualized uh, understanding on how the data moves uh, just for this function uh, is also provided. And this is a very beneficial feature. And so by adding a collapse clause, we reduce data transfer be between device memory and L2 cache by 95%. Uh, back and forth. Uh, between L2 and L1 cache, we have reduced our data transfers by 93%. Uh, and our cache hit rate has in, increased by 22%. And so all these information are pretty key uh, in improving the overall performance of the code. Um, and finally, you can also uh, figure out the number of instructions and how they changed. So this is sort of a very deep dive. Uh, it provides you uh, additional information on what aspects of the code change by just making one change um, in, your, uh, in your code. Uh, with that, I conclude my talk. Uh, I'd like to thank you uh, for attending this. Um, and we are glad to have all the new users and old users migrating to Perlmutter. Thank you.